Our service begins on page one of the service leaflet. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Mindful of all that we have endured and lost in this pandemic tide, all that we have suffered, all of which we have had to let go, and mindful of all the ways we have wounded others, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the sea, to the Red Sea, to go around the last of the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord for he His mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim 
that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered from out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways, they were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them, and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy, and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses. And we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in singing our sequence hymn, number 686, which is on page four of the service leaflet. Rescue me from 
from danger interposed his precious blood. Oh, to place our great adepter daily on constraint to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I know. Here's my heart, oh, take me, seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful people with the power of your word. Amen. This has been such a hard year for all of us, each in our own particular ways, certainly in our national life and in the world as a whole, and of course, as All Saints Church. Last year, on this second Sunday of March, the Sunday on which the time changed and we all sprang forward. This was the last day that we were able to worship together in our beloved church building. I have strong and poignant memories of that day, as I'm sure many of you do. If anyone had said to me then that we would have spent the last year grappling with all of the issues and realities we have faced, and learning to do old familiar things in new ways, even as we had to put so many other things on hold, I think it would have been like the conversation between Jesus and Rabbi Nicodemus that comes just before this gospel reading we've heard this morning. I just could not have taken it in. Nicodemus, you may remember, has heard Jesus say some interesting and intriguing and disturbing things. And he has come to Jesus privately by night under the cover of darkness so that he will not be seen. In that conversation, Jesus answers Nicodemus's questions, but the visitor does not understand the answers. They just lead to more questions. They are speaking on two different planes. And Nicodemus does not yet have the spiritual insight to understand what Jesus is saying. Now, there's another reason that it is night when Nicodemus visits. Light and darkness are very important themes in John's gospel. If we remember back to Christmas, when we heard that beautiful passage about Jesus being the light Jesus is the light that has come into the world, and the world has comprehended it not. Darkness and light. The darkness here is a spiritual darkness. It's a shadow that hangs over those who have yet to step fully into the light and life of God's love. And the light makes clear and plain not only the goodness and love of God, but also our own shortcomings and failings. And don't we know those from this pandemic year? There is not one of us who has been the best version of ourselves in the last year. How could we have been? We have known fear and doubt and confusion and anger. We've known desire to lash out, a wish to run away, We've been impatient, hopeless. Some of us have struggled with depression, sorrow, grief, and so much more. And then these feelings just fold in on themselves and sometimes they spin out of control. And into the midst of all of this, we hear Jesus say to Nicodemus, and to us, we hear Jesus say, God so loved the world that he gave his only son 
so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Or to put it in another way, this is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son, and this is why, so that no one need be destroyed. By believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. He came to help, to put the world right again. Eternal life, that experience of life with God that we call heaven, beginning in the here and now. Eternal life, here and now. Peace, wholeness, goodness, love, mercy, truth. God with us, Emmanuel. In this past year, we have struggled and experienced and learned a new, or perhaps for the first time, that church is not the building. Church is not the building. And we've learned that God is with us wherever and however we gather as a community of faith. We have been reminded that church is God's people, all of us, as Christ dwells with us, and through whom God carries out the fundamental mission to bless, heal, and care for the world, even as we bless, heal, and care for one another and receive those gifts of care from God. You will read in our year in review report of many of the ministries <clears throat> that flowed in and through All Saints Church in the year 2020. And I expect that some of you will be surprised at how much there's actually been. It hasn't been perfect. It may not have been what other churches or other parishes have done, but it is what God has given us the strength and the wisdom and the light and the guidance to do. And I'm very grateful and I am very proud of all of you. Let me say that again. I am very grateful and I'm very proud of all of you, of all of us. It occurred to me the other day that in many ways, All Saints has been doing the work of what you might call an institutional system capital campaign. Now that's a funny image. Normally in a capital campaign, a church raises money to repair, rebuild, or expand the physical structures that house worship and ministry, and perhaps set aside a special endowed fund for outreach or some other particular aspect of mission. That's the you know, textbook definition of a capital campaign. And then after the fundraising comes the work of rebuilding and retooling and renewing. And uh, if, you know, for any of you who were with us, in uh, 2007, 2008, that time period, you will remember that we engaged in just such a capital campaign and all that work was so important and we're still reaping the benefits of it. So how has this very difficult year been like a capital campaign? We have spent this year concentrating on our core ministries of worship, prayer, and outreach. And we have spent time putting systems in place to enable these core ministries, especially in worship and in our office procedures and financial systems, all the sort of behind the scenes stuff. And especially in a year with so much financial doubt and turmoil in our society at large, this has been a really important thing to be working on. Some of the aspects that we have focused on building and embedding into our parish life and our parish um, system has been institutional memory and responsibility and institutional literacy. You know, how, how does the church actually work? 
institu an institutional ongoing renewal. And at the same time that we've been doing all this, we've been engaging in mission and ministry, we've been discerning the direction of the Holy Spirit, and we have, I hope and pray, been developing further our Christian and Anglican literacy and capacity for faithful discipleship. So if you want to boil it down even further, we've been continuing to build and fine tune the plane as we've been flying it. Now, while investing in the institution may not seem exciting or even much about mission, the structures of our parish life need to be in place so that our community of faith functions in a healthy way and supports the ministry with which Jesus has entrusted us. And as we enter what we hope is the final phase of this pandemic, please God, we're all hoping and praying for that. As we enter into this final phase, please, please be patient and full of care for one another and the other people in your lives for just a little longer. Because in many ways, we are in the ice breaking up season of this pandemic. You know, that's a sort of New England term that talks about uh, when you get the spring thaw and the ice in the river starts to break up. And so, you know, spring is coming. And um, as this ice in the river starts to thaw and break up and it moves and it goes down the river, but there are big chunks that flow together and are sharp and they can crash into things like boats and docks and even people. And in doing so, they can cause a lot of damage and hurt. So please continue to be patient and full of care and loving kindness. The time between now and whenever we can move fully into what comes next will be awkward and choppy and confusing, especially for us here at church as we you know, figure out what comes next, how we can do what, when, all of those questions. That's gonna be awkward and choppy and confusing, but we know that God is in it with us and for us. God's been with us all this time. God's not gonna let us go now, but we have to hang in there with one another and with Jesus. Let us not lose heart now. And let us keep front and center before us Paul's words to the Christians in Ephesus, that reading from Ephesians. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. It is by God's grace and grace alone that we are here together now. And it is only by God's grace, mercy, and love that we will move into the light and love that are up ahead of us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we have come thus far by grace and faith in your loving care for us. Enlighten the eyes of our hearts with your grace that we may live in your light and be bearers of light and love in your world. Amen. And now continuing on page five of the service leaflet, let us give our hearts to God in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed be thy name, O God, the Father, of the people. Prayer requests can be placed in the chat function of Zoom or spoken aloud during the prayers. We pray to the Lord for courage to give up those things that keep us from God and to give ourselves to Christ this Lent. Give your church the courage to give up her preoccupation with herself and to give more time to your mission in the world. We pray for Archbishop Justin, Presiding Bishop Michael, Bishop Carly, Vicki, our rector, and Sean, our priest associate, for the community of St. John Baptist, for our Bible study group, and for our parishioners, Mary Beth Finn, Don and Joanne Fries, Lori and Randy Galky and Graham, Janet Gibbs, Lee and Jake Gillespie, and Jessica and Bailey, and Heather Gillis and Tom Graves and Harry and Lucas. May the blood and water flowing from the side of Jesus bring forgiveness to your people and help us to face the cost of proclaiming salvation. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength, Give us strength and hear our prayer. Give your world the courage to give up war, bitterness and hatred and to seek peace. May the shoulders of the risen Jesus, once scourged by soldiers, bear the burden of political and military conflict in our world. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer. 
Give us the courage to give up quarrels, strife, and jealousy in our families, neighborhoods, and communities. We pray for our country, for economic recovery and hope, and for the swift and equitable distribution of vaccines. May the presence of the risen Jesus, his body once broken and now made whole, bring peace and direction as we live with one another. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us give strength, us strength and, and hear our prayer. prayer. Give us the courage to give up our selfishness as we live for others and to give time, care, and comfort to the sick. We pray for Aiden, Karen Cipollini, Charlotte Davis, Mary Davis, Stephen and Robin Flood, Dan Lewis, Joni Meter, Miriam, Dina Flood O'Rourke and her family, Paul, Prue Peterson, Ted Raymond, Edward Roller, Sigrid, Marcy Teal, Dorothy Sims, Suzanne Traub, Phyllis Wallace. Are there others? Amber. May the wounded hands of Jesus bring his healing touch and the light of his presence fill their rooms. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us, give strength, us strength and, and hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Give us the courage to give up our fear of death and to rejoice with those who have died in faith, especially those we name. May the feet of the risen, risen Lord Jesus, once nailed to the cross, walk alongside the dying and be reaved in their agony and walk with us and all your church through death to the gate of glory. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer here and in eternity. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Please unmute yourself for the passing of the peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also with you. Please, please offer peace. one another a greeting of peace. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. peace, peace. see you, everybody. Peace be with you. Peace, peace be with you. Bow down before the Lord. Look down in mercy, O Lord, on your people who are here before you, and grant that those whom you have nourished by your word may bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please uh, be sure you're on mute, but join me in singing our final hymn, which I know all of you know very, very well, Amazing Grace. <laughs>
Yeah.